Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of Thursday Thoughts. Today we are talking about ways to clean up wax, ways to change out wax, and our favorite wax events. So in part one we talked about ways that we change out our wax, and then in part two we're going to talk about spills. And I so enjoyed the many comments left last week, so I'm going to share some of those with you. So before we do that, I'm going to talk about ways that people clean up their spills. And there are a few kind of standard methods. So we'll go through these and then I'm going to share the wax accidents with you or wax accidents. So first of all, Becky talks about how she cleans up spills. So she'll use, first of all, a freezer method. So this is if you've, if you've spilled something on fabric. So uh, if you've, for example, on a shirt or if you've spilled it on a tablecloth, you can put that in the freezer, allow it to harden, and then it should peel off. Now, if there is residual wax, if it got into the fabric itself and so it doesn't all peel off, or if the dye got in there, if the wax seeped in between the fibers, one thing you can do, and Becky does this also, is to take an iron and a paper towel, and you put the paper towel on either side of the fabric, and then you iron it. And apparently, and I've never done this, and apparently then it, it pulls it out of the fabric. So handy to know that, and many of you mentioned that. I have never done that. Somehow, in four years, I have not spilled on fabric that I'm aware of. So I guess I've been lucky. It's always been on hard surfaces. We do not have carpeting. I guess that's a big reason why I haven't spilled on, on fabric. I've certainly gotten it in my hair a lot, but I haven't gotten it on my shirt. So... Anyway, Becky, freezer method and, and ironing. Um, Jane said that her preferred method is um, to wipe up, well, this is what she had experience with, and I'll share the wax it um, Using hot water and pouring that, you can use a hot rag, but it has to be quite hot, and that causes the wax to melt, and then you can either rub it away or kind of peel it away or scrape it away more readily. So hot water method, and many of you mentioned that. Natasha said that she uses counter clean, and I'm thinking that is in the dishes. A lot of people have said you can use Scentsy counter clean. It'll help get that residual wax off. Also, hot water. Uh, yes, warm it up and wipe. Warm up, Natasha. I'm thinking you might you either mean hot water or also a hair dryer, and I've done that a lot. You can use a hair dryer directly on the spilled wax, causing it to soften, and then you take a paper towel and, and sop that up. Mother Laura, uh, on, they talk about if you spill it on yourself, Scentsy Wax is typically not hot enough. It's designed, our warmers are designed, I say our because I'm a consultant, Scentsy warmers are designed to not be hot enough to cause burns. So it'll, you have to wait for it to harden. It's like when you have um, a hand treatment for arthritis or just for, uh, as part of a um, a spa treatment where you're putting your hands, I have never done this, but in, in hot wax, that must feel wonderful. And then you, it just peels away. So, um, cleaning up, yes, Mother Laura was talking about, if you, if you spill it on a warmer, how that's going to take more work. And if it has little crevices in the design, I'll, I'm going to tell you, talk about that in a minute <laughs> when I share my wax in it. I have a small wax in it. Brandy talked about using, um, she'll use all the methods, but using a hair dryer and again, wipe that up with a paper towel or you can scrape it with a credit card. There's all those different ways. You have to wait for it to harden and then you can use a card or a putty knife. Um, Patricia Gates said variety of, of cleanup methods. Um, and then Carrie echoed that saying that she uses a plastic scraper that's like a putty knife, but it's made of plastic. And that's a good idea because sometimes I have used a metal putty knife and you have to be careful what kind of surface, you know, if it's a plastic surface, that's really not going to be a problem. But on a nice hardwood floor or on a scratchable countertop, a putty knife, a metal putty knife is probably not the best choice. I have done that, but I didn't cause any damage, surprisingly. Uh, Sandy uses a scraper after it's hardened. Many of you talked about this. Um, a credit card or debit card. I, I don't have a credit card. I have a debit card. Using, using that after it's hardened is pretty effective because you can get a real nice edge. 
but it's not so hard that it's that it scratches. Rachel O'Donnell said, um, <laughs> she said her preferred method of wax removal from kitchen surfaces is to pour on boiling water and then scald your fingers while wiping it up. <laughs> Rachel, yes. I remember doing that a few years ago. I spilled, I knocked a warmer into the sink and then I closed off the drain, you know, covered it completely with a rubber stopper and then I, um, I used boiling water to get it off inside the sink. Now I probably would use more of a credit card approach now, but sometimes if there's, you know, if there's crevices, it's the boiling water works well. Cindy said she uses a hair dryer and paper towels. And all of these people had wax dents to illustrate the use of these things that we will learn in a minute. Um, Wynn's mom that said that she has had no spills yet. When I, Wynn's mom is a newer melter and has had no accidents yet. That period of innocence, I envy you so, and I hope that that continues. But, you know, typically it happens. It's just inevitable, but let's let's hope that's a long time before you have an accident. And she said, reading everyone else's spills has me, and reading everyone else's stories has me hopefully prepared if it happens. Um, Deck Chair said that she usually has just a few drops so I believe, Deck Chair, you're using the silicone warmers, and so I think um, because she's not hot pouring anything, yes, she's minimizing her, her spills, but don't you ever knock into anything, Deck Chair? You must be just a much more, um, you know, a, a much more elegant mover about the house than I am. I, you know, I knock into things. Um, a few drops, and then she just uses a fingernail. Great point. You know, that, that's something so simple, and it works. Um, Joanne said that she has usually spilled on hard surfaces, like myself, and so she'll use a scraper of some kind once it's dry. And then, you know, myself, a um, combination of methods. I let the wax dry, use a credit card or a putty knife, depending on the surface. Um, hair dryer and paper towel has worked well. Boiling water. I had to use boiling water, and I also have a steam shooter. I forget the correct name of that. It's like a steam gun. And it sends out a very fine um, cone of steam. And that is useful for cleaning grout and other things. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about that, but it was very helpful. Okay, this is Jack Skellington Mini Warmer, which was for sale yesterday in the flash sale. The flash sale ended early this morning because they reached capacity. Anyway, this fellow, who I love dearly, Mini Welter of Jack Skellington from Nightmare Before Christmas, this is a very detailed mini warmer. As you can see, it has Zero, his beloved dog, it has a pumpkin, you know, it has the, the hill. So there's a lot of places on here for wax to get stuck in. Jack himself is quite detailed. So when we were having our walls painted last year, that was the same time that hardwood floors were put in. We did a, a renovation last year. One of the workers who was painting, there was wax in here, and he didn't realize there was wax. I'm telling you my wax it out, I guess. This is the second wax it out. I described my candle last week. Just pulled this out of the wall, not realizing it. It was red wax, of course, and it went everywhere, but it went all over this warmer. So I had to use a combination of boiling water, the hair dryer, um, and then my little steam gun thing uh, that really helped getting it out of a lot of the crevices. So that's just another cleanup method. That said, let's talk about the wax accidents. All right, I have 31 minutes, okay, on this, so that gives us, we're at nine, so, okay. If, I'm, if I think we should be able to do this. So, first of all, I have to share Deck Chair's com comment because several of us had wax accidents that occurred within a very short time of a renovation or a new flooring, new, paint, new something, new carpet. He said, it's as if we need to baptize our new renovations. <laughs> I just love that. Because yes, you know, that's the last thing you want to do with brand new whatever that you've spent good money on and now you have a big mess. So I'm actually going to open my phone because some of these I'm just going to, I have them summarized here, but I want to, um, I want to read verbatim some of the comments. 
So um, I just shared with you my Jack Skellington mini warmer wax it in. And last week I described my um, candle wax it in. And I apologize for going first. That's rude, but it's uh, I want to, in the order here, I want to go um, back to front. So Joanne Gillick. Joanne had an accident at work where she spilled wax underneath a desk. So to, to um, paraphrase, um, Joanne said that she was trying to be unobtrusive and not, there were other people seated in the area and she wanted to keep the wax scent as contained as she could to herself and not spread it too far. And so she put, put the warmer on a plastic tote underneath her desk. And so then she said, she forgot it was there. Here we go. She said, I moved my warmer down on top of a plastic tote that I had under my desk. I forgot it was there and accidentally knocked it over onto the carpet. The melted wax went everywhere. I ended up bringing my iron from home, using an old dish towel on top of the spilled wax and trying to melt the wax onto the old dish towel. It worked, but there were still traces and evidence of my wax in it on the carpet. It even got all over a surge protector that I have the warmer plugged into. Needless to say, I brought my warmer home and will not take that risk again. And how sweet are you trying to minimize that, that scent? So, and isn't it always when we're doing something at work, you know, that we do it in grand fashion, Joanne? I have, I have spilled a lot of things at work over the years. Orange soda into my computer laptop, into my laptop comes to mind. So thank you for sharing that. Um, deck chair shares with us a smoke event and she said um, so I'm going to paraphrase again um, she a newly painted bathroom there had been a bathroom renovation she had a candle going and it was of course because new paint this was a very sooty candle turned out to be and you know you don't always know that right it, it's not obvious it's not just puffing away but it's it's in the air and we don't always see it. So she got it, it got all over the, um, the newly painted walls. So here, let me, let me read that little bit to you here. Would you settle for a smoke dent? I just had my bathroom remodeled and I left my Yankee candle going accidentally. Who knew what an absolute mess that soot would make? I still haven't gotten it all off the ceiling. It really needs new paint. I even remember the name of the scent, but I won't mention it in case it's someone's favorite. You are a sweetheart. So, yeah, and needless to say, it isn't my favorite scent. Always when it's something new, right? Then we had Cindy. So Cindy, another incident with work-related, and she had the cloud warmer from Scentsy, which I also have, which is a beautiful little cloud. It's absolutely lovely. It's an element warmer, but it also has an LED light in the cloud, and it has a little face on the cloud. It's just charming. So, Cindy, I am going to read you this one, and forgive me for scrolling here. And, of course, now I can I find it? Okay. Well, I'm going to, yes, I am going to take the time to find this because it is, it is, so I, I can tell you this while I'm looking for it. Cindy was had set up an important work call. She was the one who booked the call, and it was as she said, it was kind of a big deal. The call, it was it was a call that was an important one, and she had the the little cloud warmer nearby, and she was melting something as I have done many times, because you know you want something comforting. Here it is. You want something comforting if you're in a stressful call. I have done that so many times. I'll have a scent going nearby to be pleasant during the call. So she said um, she had it placed to the right of the keyboard, computer, monitor, laptop, you know, all of my expensive stuff. I was in a work meeting that I booked, cameras on, kind of a big deal, yet I wanted to warm one of the new bars on my desk. So when someone else was talking and without looking away from the camera, I reached for my warmer dish and realized too late that it had wax in it. So many of us have done this where you just for, have forgotten for whatever reason there's wax already going in there. I spilled the wax all over my desk, 
Trying to act normal, I glanced over and saw the wax all over my desk, keyboard, and laptop. Happily, my MacBook was closed. After the meeting and the wax hardening, I used the flat edge of a clamshell to scrape the wax off my desk and laptop case, used the hairdryer to melt the wax between the keyboard keys, and used a paper towel to soak it all up. So, Cindy, I applaud you. If any of you know Cindy from Instagram um, and YouTube, although she's much more active on Instagram, Cindy has a beautiful, very expressive face. And I can just picture you trying to maintain composure in the call and act like everything is fine. And inside your, your stomach is turning because you know you've made this massive accident. Well done, Cindy. Now, Sandy A said that she spilled on spilled wax on clothing and she then used uh, she let it cool and she used the ironing technique with paper towels on both sides and was able to get all of that out of the clothing so the great job and I have never done that so I'm, I'm sure the occasion will come Carrie B oh Carrie has had a, a lidded warmer so if you think about a warmer that has a top on it the wax dish is inside and then a lid goes over that. Typically, typically the lid has holes in it so that the scent can come out. So she went to pull the, the lid off and the dish stuck to the lid. So when she pulled that off, the lid flew out and the wax went everywhere, most particularly down into a wicker container. It spilled all over onto wicker and so she said it just took forever to get that out. And um, I, I think of all the surfaces that you could spill into, that would be one of the most challenging because all the little crevices. And I'm trying to remember, Carrie, how you got down into the crevices. So let me, let me find that one. And again, I am, here it is. Over a wicker chest. Okay. Okay. Um, Stuck in all the crevices, I just scrubbed it down with a dish scrub brush. And she said, it's still a little sticky. Yeah, that had to be a, a really difficult one to clean up, Carrie. Thank you for sharing that with us. Carol Lang, and, and again, welcome, Carol. Uh, Carol said that she shared a couple of, of unique ones because they weren't um, accidents in her, in her, well, the one was in her home. The first was, Carol was working in a candle store. And there were shelves with over a hundred glass candles, and you can hear where this is going. So she said that um, here it is. I know I had this in order. Okay, so she's saying that um, a customer climbed up on a shelving unit to grab a candle higher up. Before any of the employees noted what she was up to, the entire shelving unit collapsed along with over a hundred large glass jar candles. Can you imagine? Miraculously, the frightened, embarrassed customer was unhurt. She wanted to help clean up, but of course we couldn't let her for safety reasons. It was a massive cleanup. We were finding broken glass and splattered fragrance oils in corners for days after. Amazingly, some of the jars that fell from the highest shelf simply bounced and remained unbroken. Wow. So I asked if the customer had to bear the, the, any of the cost, and she said that the customer had offered to pay, which was very gracious, but they said, no, it's, you know, there's insurance for that kind of thing, but it was just a massive, massive mess, and they had to do a, a inventory sheet on each broken candle. Can you imagine? And then the other one Carol shared, which I enjoyed so much, was in her own home, and there, there was a, a, a tea light, and the, there was it her daughter, my youngest, my young daughter was playing with her gerbil and playfully set it down on the countertop. The little gerbil made a beeline for the enclosed ceramic warmer as we all shrieked in horror. A moment or so later, he came out with his whiskers smoking, but was otherwise unharmed. Can you imagine? He was a lucky fellow, Carol. Thank you for those. Those were great. All of these are great. Um, Patricia Gates, similar to many of us, shares an incident where she grabbed a dish that she th thought the warmer was off. Have we all done that? I certainly have done that. 
and um, and uh, it felt, it went all over herself, all over her clothing, and she said her is it Lulu Lululemon um, shirt still has stiff places in it from um, it was a clean cotton was the scent. Patricia, I have done that numerous times. You, know, you think that you've turned the light off, you've turned it off and maybe done something else and then you <laughs> go to smell it. Or I think Patricia said she had gone to smell it and it, it, it was full of wax and poured all over. So thank you for that. Brandy. Brandy said that uh, her incident was just a few weeks ago and similar to what Patricia had done, she just grabbed the dish <laughs> in the trust in him warmer Sensi Warmer. Here, I want to read some of this. And, um, you know, I did these in order, but they're not in the same order now. So I'm not sure how I accomplished that. But in my own special way, I have reordered them on my phone. So, yes, thank you for your patience while I find this one. And I believe it is up toward, here we go, Brandy. Okay, so the waxident, <laughs> so she's saying um, one evening she had gone around, shut off all the warmers, I have two dishes for my trust in him warmer, so I'll use one dish for the evening melting and got a second one so she could change it in the morning. So she had forgotten she had just turned the warmers off, and I've done this so many times, and um, walked over, grabbed the dish to exchange it, Normally the dish is hardened, but it wasn't. It flung everywhere on the floor, in my, down my shirt, in my face, on my hair, on my clothes, the wall. And here's the part that I totally related to. The worst part was I was on my way to bed, so I totally understood what you mean about there go my plans for the next couple of hours. It took a minute to compute what had happened, and then I just wanted to cry because I was already so tired. It took me over an hour and a half to get it cleaned up, and the next day I discovered places I had missed and cleaned that up too. This is it. You know, you don't get it all, especially when you're tired. I'm so sorry, Brandy. It's, I could really relate. I could really relate to that. Mother Laura um, described an incident where her three-year-old knocked over a warmer and got this, I believe it's your granddaughter, and got wax all over herself, and then... Um, but it, because it was, this was Scentsy Wax, so not so hot, and she was able to just wait till it dried, peel it off, or rub it off. And then um, all, the floor, happily right there, she had piddle pads down for her. She has two elderly dogs who sometimes have a little dribbling. I understand that. And um, so it didn't get on the floor. So it, 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 all things considered, Mother Laura, that turned out okay. It, it, I'm, I'm happy for you, and I'm glad that the little one... Um, you know, wasn't too upset by all of that. Natasha similarly describes an incident where, how are we doing on time? Oh, good. Where she, a um, two-year-old got into a warmer, covered herself in wax um, happily again. No burns because it was, uh, it was sensey warmer. It doesn't get hot enough to cause burns. And then another time, her eight-year-old dunked the cat's tail in a warmer and, um, it took a little while for the, the that to harden, but then she used a what's called a knit brush or a, a flea brush. It's a real fine comb and was able to get the wax off the cat's tail. Poor cat. <coughs> Things happen. Jane, I have to read this one to you. I laughed so hard. So Jane is describing an incident where she hasn't had too many... Um, spills, but she did have an incident in her home from a visitor, and this was um, somebody that was just, you know, relaxing in her home. Yes, I'm stalling. <laughs> I find it. Here it is. Okay, I've only had one really bad accident where a guest stretched out and knocked a warmer with Southern Evening Wax, which is a beautiful, scentsy fragrance which threw itself all down my beige wall. So the guest stretched out and did this. Luckily, neither the warmer nor the dish broke. Having wiped up the wax as much as possible, the only thing left was to scrub the wall with hot water and then repaint that part of the wall. This then looked a different color to the rest of the wall. So true. You know, 
the wall that's there is exposed to the ele the elements and sunlight and it has changed a bit so when you get the fresh wax from the same can that the original was painted it's going to be slightly different so anyway then she had to repaint the whole wall so my question there jane is did you ever invite this person back the debate she had them shall i stick to lighter colored wax or not invite the guest around again and she says i still love and warm southern evening and i have left becky's for last becky hen describes and let me find this so it must be at the top somehow i have reversed these okay so becky says they had gotten similar to my story this is another one where the brand new um, remodel in the house and in this case it was berber carpeting and berber is made of a combination of wool and some amount of nylon so Becky said, my doozy waxident. In 2002, we bought our first and only carpeting with everything we had, cream Berber. So proud. As usual, I decorated with candles. And on the corner of the coffee table, I lit the Yankee Green Bayberry candle. Somehow I sent that candle flying into the center of the living room with bright green wax all over our new three-day-old cream carpet. Having had previous wool carpet, I immediately got the iron and a piece of tissue to clean it up. Then I realized I had just melted the nylon carpet soaked with green wax. No way to cover it up, and it is there to this day, a severe reminder every day. Becky, my heart goes out to you. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that either. You know, the nylon and the carpeting melted. Second story, and thank you for sharing this one too. Last month when my daughter gave me her new dress to iron for a wedding in a few hours, not realizing until I, after I finished ironing it, I threw it into wax and had it all over her dress. I guess, you know, you're just laying it across a table or a chair or whatever, just not remembering that there's a wax with warmer, a warmer with wax in it. She came in the kitchen and saw me putting her dress in the freezer. The look on her face as I was trying to figure out how I was going to explain this was priceless. I got it all out. Well done, Becky. Well done. So when Becky talked about, uh, I'm going to save that comment. You're going to have to wait till the last section. Okay, we are at almost yeah, 28 nearly. Good. So I'm going to stop this. We'll do part three. Part three, I'm going to talk about um, questions for next week. And then just general, random, heartwarming, and funny comments from viewers from last week's comments. So uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in part three. Bye for now.